back like we never left. It's Double Move Sports. As always, I'm Steph Albiero. I'm here with the fantasy phenom, Alex Lott. Alex took it and ran with it last week, was doing these start-sit videos solo. Alex, I appreciate you putting that work in. Had to join you on the show now, and hopefully for the rest of the season, because I'm loving this start-sit format that we're getting into. Before we get into every single game coming up in Week 2, telling you whether to start or sit these players, don't forget, if you like the show, a like and a sub on YouTube, always appreciated. Hit that Discord link if you have more specific questions, start-sit questions, trade questions you name it hit that discord link it's free to join alex and i are in there and we got a whole community over 165 people strong holding it down talking about fantasy talking about football and everything we love to do alex you ready to get into this week two start sit for the quarterback position yeah but before we do jump in i just want to second what you said about the discord because what i found especially last week doing these we're going to go through each quarterback in this video we're also going to do running backs we're also going to do wide receivers in separate videos but a lot of times you might have two players that are starts on our list today and you're like okay i had jalen hurts who was a start and i had justin herbert who was a start like which one should i actually play in my matchup and that's why that discord is so important because these videos are great they give you a lot of context on the matchups what you can expect but if you want more feedback from steph from myself and from everyone else in the double move community like that is the perfect place to do it. And Steph and I are in there answering questions all week long, all weekend long, and you're going to get a lot of feedback from others as well. So that Discord is super important. I want to see that thing blowing up again this week. And also live streams. We're going to do live streams throughout the week on Sunday mornings with Start Sick Questions. And we have Discord exclusive live streams. We're not only Those giving things you get a quick personal. Answer. Yeah, we're not only giving you a quick answer. We're like live reviewing rosters, telling you what we think you should do. There's a lot of smack talk going down with people in the same league in the Discord, so don't miss out. Hop in there. But Steph, without further ado, let's hop into these matchups. Starting out with a Thursday night game this week that's not quite as exciting as the Bucks and the Cowboys. It's the New York Giants at the Washington football team. I had to fact check this over under because it might have moved a little bit, but right now it's 41. Like that is a brutally Yikes. low over under in this game. Washington is favored by three and a half points. And at the quarterback spot, it's easy on the Washington side. I mean, Taylor Heineke's a sit. Hope the kid can come out and produce for this offense. They are built through their defense. But Heineke's an obvious sit for me. And then on the other side of the ball, Danny Dimes, who knows, in good matchups, he might show us enough to be streamable at some point in the season. It's definitely not this week. Even in a 2QB league, I'm fading Danny Dimes against one of the best, if not the best defense in the league in the Washington football team. So you're not getting any quarterbacks in this Thursday night game. Um, and you're looking to Sunday or Monday night to grab your quarterback start this week. Next up, we got the Rams traveling to Indianapolis after that win against the Chicago Bears on Sunday night football. And the over under this game, a little bit higher than I would have thought. 47 and a half point over under. The Rams are four-point favorites here. You're starting Matt Stafford. We don't need to tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. You're plugging him in every single week, coming off a 24.34 fantasy point performance. Very efficient. Three touchdowns. Didn't throw a single interception. And then on the other side of the ball, Carson Wentz. I'm not plugging him out there. I think he will have weeks, especially later on in the season when some of these softer matchups come around. He did look pretty mobile for a guy who's coming in with an injured foot. But for right now, keep Carson Wentz either on the waiver wire or on the end of your bench in a deep league. Yeah, unfortunately for my Colts, I agree with you there, Steph. Wentz in the Colts, very tough stretch to start the year. And Stafford has a great stretch of games coming up, so he's going to be locked in your lineup every single week. But let's go ahead and move on to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Chicago Bears, a 45-point over-under in this one. Chicago, actually the home favorite by three points. I think this is going to be a great matchup. And on the Bears side of the ball, still easy for me. Andy Dalton is a sit, even in a fairly plus matchup against the Bengals. And as if Dalton wasn't scary enough, I mean, last week we saw Justin Fields come in and score a touchdown. Justin Fields actually scored more fantasy points in week one than Andy Dalton did, and he played like five plays. So you're not starting Andy Dalton in this game. And for the Bengals, this this might be one that I struggled with the most this week. We might actually disagree. I'm interested to hear your take on this one, Steph. I have Joe Burrow as a start. I know the volume wasn't what we wanted in week one. They really relied on Joe Mixon in that running game. But I'm willing to start Joe Burrow. The volume was low, but the efficiency was high against the Vikings. Stafford did just pick this Bears defense apart. So I think Burrow, with the weapons he has in Cincinnati, is going to be good enough to be in your lineup. 
but it's a tough one for me. He's probably one of the lower starts on this list. And there's a lot of other streamers in good matchups I would prefer over Burrow. But if you've got him, I am willing to roll him out there. Yeah, if you drafted him, to have him be the only QB on your roster, I think he is a fine streamer. But I think there are some very high upside names. Look at like Jameis Winston, who's probably mm-hmm. out on some waiver wires. Names like that, that you can plug in over Joe Burrow in the Chicago matchup. Had the lowest pass attempts in any game of his career. So as a rookie, this guy was dishing the ball more. It just looks like the Bengals are going to have a more balanced approach now with Joe Mixon fully back, healthy, and they're willing to feed him as they just showed in week one. But certainly Jamar Chase is going to help Joe Burrow out. That, to me, is what tips the scales, having Jamar Chase now in that offense. But continuing down our list, we have the Texans going to (laughs) Cleveland. It's a 48-point over under. The Browns are 12.5-point favorites. Love to see that as a Browns fan, which actually makes Baker Mayfield a streamable starter this week. You know, Maybe I look at Baker over Joe Burrow, who we are just talking about. I do think the efficiency will be high. I'm not worried about the Texans' defense at all. The only risk with Baker, and this is why he is a streamer and not a guy we were telling you to pick up in drafts, is because this could be a run-heavy game script. This could just be a Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt fiesta, and Baker really doesn't have to do much on the other side of the ball. Glad to see Tyrod Taylor have a good game. Back, actually looking good last week. Granted, it was against Jacksonville, but still not a guy you want to start. He's not doing enough yet with his legs. Maybe over the season there could be weeks, but right now, Tyrod, leave him on the waivers. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, this Texans team, week one, we have to take it with a grain of salt against Jacksonville, another bad team. But if the Texans even look half decent against the Browns and their offense is able to move the ball, Against a good defense like Cleveland, that is going to be the test for me on whether I'm willing to elevate some of these guys for future weeks. But let's go ahead and move on to the Bills at the Dolphins. A 47.5 point over under in this game. Buffalo is the three-point favorite on the road. And for the for the Bills, it's easy. Josh Allen is a must-start every week. I know he didn't give you that boom week against Pittsburgh that you wanted, but we did expect the Steelers to be a tough matchup. They are one of the top units in the league. The Dolphins' defense is nothing to scoff at, but Josh Allen someone you have to roll out there each and every week, and I expect him to be much better than he was in week one. Still had 51 pass attempts from Josh Allen in a brutal game. You'll love to see that. I was actually shocked to see that because I watched that game. I had red zone on one TV, had the Steelers-Bills game on the other, really tracking Najee closely, unfortunately. But that was such a grinded out, like gross game to watch with low volume. I was shocked to see how many attempts Josh Allen had but you'll love to see that volume. So you're starting him, no questions asked. And then for the Dolphins, you mentioned Tua a little bit earlier. He is going to be interesting this season in plus matchups. This is not one of them. Tua is a sit for me this week at home. After what I saw from this Bills defense in week one, I'm definitely not pushing them in week two with Tua at my quarterback spot. The Bills locked down the Steelers. I know they lost the game, but they shut down Najee. For a lot of the game, they shut down the Steelers passing attack as well. Uh, The Steelers' defense really helped them win the field position battle and get some advantages in that game. So Tua against a Bills defense that came out hot, it's just not the matchup for me to rule him out there. So if he's on the waiver wire, keep an eye on him for future weeks, but it's not going to be here in week two. Love Tua as a bench stash, especially with Will Fuller coming back. And if the roles were reversed and we saw Tua with 51 pass attempts and Allen with 27, maybe things would be a little bit different here. But let's move to Patriots at the New York Jets. The over-under is 43, so another gross, low-scoring affair per (laughs) Las Vegas. The Patriots are five-point favorites here. Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, they're fine upside flyers, guys that you must have in super flex leagues. They need to be rostered, but in single QB redraft leagues, I'm setting both of these guys this week. Just want to see more from these rookies as they continue to get onboarded. I will say, though, Zach Wilson, second-highest yards per pass attempt on the week last week behind, I believe it was uh, Russell Wilson as the only one there. So Zach Wilson could be interesting if they're going to let him sling the rock like that, but that offense has a lot of growing pains they're going to need to go through first. I'm with you on that one. And unfortunately, I think the Patriots are going to have low over-unders throughout the season, you know, built on a strong defense, rookie quarterback, a pretty good running game. And we'll get into Damian Harris in our running back video. He was very interesting in week one, but definitely sitting both of the rookies in week two. Wait, 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 wait. Alex, I have to stop the show because I'm dumb hyped over this new sponsorship deal we got. Shout out to our guys over at Manscaped. And look, I was skeptical, but Alex, you know I've been a very hairy guy for a long time. I was the kid at 13 years old in middle school. Oh, yeah. With chest hair shown out of the polo shirt. Like, I was that dude. I was was jealous at the time. (laughs) I was jealous at the time. Well, (laughs) nothing to be jealous over anymore because ever since I got this lawnmower 4.0 from them, 
It's been clean down there to say the least. Manscaped has the lawnmower 4.0, not the one, not the two, not the three, but the 4.0. Talk about sleepers on our show, and this has to be one of the best sleeper products out there. I was skeptical as well, and it's been an absolute game changer. Check out Manscaped. This thing is legit, and you will definitely not be disappointed um, by this full body trimmer. It's incredible. So Manscaped was nice enough to give us a 20% off discount code for the Double Move Sports viewers. You can get 20% off and free shipping with code DMS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code DMS, unlock your confidence, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now back to the show. But Steph, let's get to the 49ers at the Eagles. I mean, both of these teams lit it up in week one with their offenses and over under a 50 in this game. San Francisco is the three and a half point road favorite. And Steph, your fantasy MVP at the quarterback spot this season, Jalen Hurts, he fit the bill in week one. He gave you everything you wanted and more, not only from a fantasy perspective, but arguably more importantly, even in our case as a fantasy football podcast, it was great to see him just as an NFL quarterback absolutely dominant in this game. He's securing that role one week at a time. And he'll get a very difficult test against the 49ers. I know Detroit had a decent game against them with their offensive output, um, but they're still a top defense. But I I mean, Jalen Hurts, after what we saw in week one, what he adds with his legs, at this point, he is a must start every single week until further notice. So that one's easy. And honestly, the other side of the sword is the 49ers side of the ball. And Jimmy Garoppolo is a sit. You're not starting him right now, even in a plus matchup against the Eagles. Because we saw what we saw with Chicago, with San Francisco, Trey Lance coming in, stealing touchdowns. Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have a ton of upside to begin with. And now with Trey Lance on his heels, no way you're starting Jimmy Garoppolo at any point this season. Next, we got the Raiders at Pittsburgh against the Steelers. It's a 47.5 point over under. Pittsburgh, six point favorites at home. Derek Carr, you can sit him, especially after what we just saw last week. He's streamer of all streamers. Don't draft him. Don't put him on your bench. You can pick him up as a one-week rental if you actually have to start Derek Carr at some point. Hopefully you don't. Big Ben on the other side of the ball. Also a guy that should be in streamer range. I don't love to start him this week. I think you can go with options like Baker. Go blow a little bit of fab on your waiver wire and go get Jameis Winston. But Big Ben in what should be a plus matchup against the Raiders, I'm willing to throw him out there. And I'm probably going to take the over in this game. Hey, I don't like the Derek Carr slander. I mean, this guy did everything you needed in week one, over 400 yards. High volume, went out and won the game, but I get what you're saying. You're never excited about Derek Carr, but I will say, time and time again, an underrated quarterback. So in these start-sit segments throughout the season, there's going to be times where we're very, very interested in Carr. But to your point, it's not against Pittsburgh here in Week 2. But let's move on to the Saints at the Panthers because you've already brought up Jameis Winston several times. The over-under in this one's 44.5 points, which is actually a little bit low in my opinion. New Orleans is the three-point road favorite. And for me, Jameis Winston, no secret here. He's a start in week two. We did see the five touchdowns in week one. The overall volume was low, but that's because this was an absolute anomaly of a game against the Packers. Quite frankly, they didn't even need him. I'm surprised he threw five touchdowns with the volume he got. But against a weak Panthers defense in week two, I do think he's a start. He showed me a lot of upside in week one with his efficiency. So I'm all in on Winston for week two. And on the Panthers side of the ball, Sam Darnold is a sit. He played okay against the Jets, showed a lot of flashes, actually had a rushing touchdown as well. But after what the Saints just did to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, there's no way I'm starting Sam Darnold against him this week. So he's a sit for me. If he comes out and impresses, then maybe Darnold's turning a corner in his career. Um, But he's not someone I want to roll out there. Now over to Broncos at Jaguars. It's a 45 and a half point over under. Denver six point favorites here. And talking about another streamer that you can plug in, a guy that we love as a one-week rental this week, go and grab Teddy Bridgewater, who showed that he could keep Mm -hmm. an offense moving with the skilled weapons group. Granted, they are going to be missing Jerry Judy for the next two months of the season, but I think Teddy Bridgewater is a fine streamer. Another guy to continue to keep an eye on, keep him on your bench, Trevor Lawrence, and the other side of the ball, he had like a Jameis Winston stat line, three interceptions, three touchdowns, threw the ball a ton. We could see him breaking pass attempt records this year, a la Joe Burrow in his rookie season. So keep an eye on Trevor Lawrence, but I'm not plugging him in against a stout Broncos defense. Really at every position on the field, secondary, up front, those stack seven. 
I'm avoiding T-Law this week against the Broncos. Yeah, this is not the week to start T-Law. The volume should be a lot lower than it was against Houston last week, so he's definitely a fade. And before we get into the Vikings-Cardinals, I just want to remind everyone, I don't think we've said it yet, we do have starts of the week coming up at the end of the episode. So once we hit every matchup, Steph and I are going to give that double move stamp of approval on one quarterback each, just a guy that we love above consensus and above his projection for week two. So don't go away because that is coming at the end. But in the Vikings at the Cardinals, it's an over-under of 51 points. So one of the higher over-unders on the week. We're getting into some of the shootouts here at the end of the episode. The Cardinals are a four-point favorite after a great week one. And Kyler's a a must-start every single week. What a week one. I mean, this guy is like one of those MVP favorites to take a step forward again this season. He certainly did that against Tennessee last week. So he's an auto start. And then Kirk Cousins. I think you can start him against Arizona. Ryan Tannehill struggled last week against a Cardinals defense that came out on fire. You know, Chandler Jones with five sacks in that game. But I do think the Vikings are going to have a really balanced approach in this game. And Cousins is going to be able to do enough through Justin Jefferson, through Adam Thielen, to be a streamer against the Cardinals in a decent, you know, over-under game at 51 points. There could be a lot of uh, scoring going on the board. So I think both of these guys are starts. And then an NFC South matchup, we have the Falcons going down to Tampa, taking on the Buccaneers. The Bucs are heavy favorites, 13-point favorites in this game, but a high over-under of 52 points. You're starting Tom Brady. Don't need to say anything else there. But Matt Ryan, he's an interesting one. He's a guy that I'm willing to, to drop if I ever had him. We weren't telling you to draft him. If you did, I think you can drop him because he looked horrible in week one, and I have some real concerns in that offense without Julio Jones. 21 for 35 for 164 yards, no touchdowns. It's hard to get excited about Matt Ryan really at all this season until we see that Falcons offense change something under new head coach Arthur Smith. Yeah, next up we have the Cowboys at the Chargers, a 55 point over under in this game. And believe it or not, that's not even the highest over under of the week. The Cowboys are going to be that team again that we see in these shootouts. You'll love to see it from a fantasy perspective. The Chargers are actually home favorites in this one by three points. And both of these quarterbacks are just smash plays this week. Dak Prescott, I loved what I saw from him against the tough Tampa defense in his first game back from the injury. You're starting Dak, no questions asked. And on the Chargers side of the ball, I love Justin Herbert this week. I mean, Tom Brady just absolutely lit the Cowboys on fire. And Herbert did struggle a little bit in week one, but he did enough. I mean, they pulled out the win. He just didn't put up a a massive fantasy output. So in this matchup against Dallas, I think they are going to rely on his arm to put up some points in this game. I absolutely love Herbert as a start this week. Another high over-under game, one I'm really excited to watch because I think it's just going to be a back-and-forth shootout. Hopefully, we'll see based on what the Titans did in Week 1. But the Titans go to Seattle. They play the Seahawks. It's a 54-point over-under. Right now, Seattle's a 5.5-point favorite in this game. But you're starting both Ryan Tannehill and Russell Wilson. I've actually comped Ryan Tannehill to Russell Wilson for a long time. The concerns for me on Tannehill, though, is that offensive line in Tennessee looked absolutely brutal against the Arizona Cardinals in week one. Mm -hmm. Now, that could have been some pop games from Chandler Jones. That could have been J.J. Watt opening some things up. The, The Cardinals could be interesting. But on the flip side, it could be that that Titans offensive line with some new pieces in there is struggling a little bit. We even saw that play itself out with Derrick Henry, but I'm still plugging Tannehill in in a high over-under game, a guy who can use his legs and give you enough on uh, with a rushing floor. Hopefully this one turns into a shootout. Julio continues to develop in his role with the Titans. And next we do have the highest over-under of the week, the Chiefs at the Ravens on Sunday Night Football, 55 and a half point over-under in this one. The Chiefs are three-point favorites on the road in Baltimore. And I mean, I don't need to say much about Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. You're starting both of them. But all I do want to say is with this being a Sunday night football game, a lot of fantasy football matchups could come down to Lamar Jackson needing a certain amount of points, could come down to Patrick Mahomes needing a certain amount of points. So if you've got one of these guys, you're obviously starting them. But I just want to remind you to get your popcorn ready for that game because this one's going to be an absolute blast. Could be one of the games. I'm hoping that Ravens passing attack can improve. I cannot wait till they get Rashad Bateman back in there. Absolutely. Because it was rough at times in week one. But last game here on our slate before we get into our starts of the week is the Lions at the Packers. Hopefully a bounce back game for Green Bay. I don't know what happened 
in week one. That game was absolutely disgusting. The wheels fell off for Aaron Rodgers. It's a 48.5 point over under. Green Bay are 10.5 point favorites. So I'm willing against all the week one evidence to put Aaron Rodgers back in there. Expect a bounce back against a weak Lions defense that now loses Jeff Okuda, the third overall pick in 2020's NFL draft for the rest of the season with an Achilles injury. If you look at Jared Goff, I think he can be a desperation streamer in a tough situation. A guy that I think you can plug in this week in super flex leagues as well. Because of what these running backs and TJ Hawkinson are able to do in that Lions offense, I don't think he's sustainable long term. I think Jared Goff will get figured out. You cannot have that super low average depth of target all season and still be effective and efficient. And we saw the game script play into Goff putting up some pretty decent numbers, some pretty incredible numbers, to be honest with you, in week one. But that actually brings me to my start of the week, which is Aaron Rodgers. And the reason he is my start of the week is because you might be a little bit shook. I'm a little bit shook as a heavy Devontae Adams investor. I'm shook (laughs) with Aaron Rodgers in a lot of my dynasty leagues where I have him as my second QB or my first quarterback. But I'm willing to look at last week with a huge grain of salt not overreact and put Aaron Rodgers right back in. It seems like there's always some sort of drama with Aaron Rodgers, so it's perfect that he can start the year with a horrible game against the Saints and then come back, show everyone that, hey, wait, I'm still a Hall of Fame level quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, one of the best of my era in Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going to doubt these old proven stud quarterbacks like we have with Tom Brady in the past, and I'm going to plug Aaron Rodgers right back in with confidence, and I think you should too. I love the stamp of approval on Aaron Rodgers. And mine is kind of similar. I mean, this guy didn't have as bad of a week one as Rodgers did, but I'm going Justin Herbert against the Dallas Cowboys. Herbert was fine in week one. I mean, 31 of 47. I love the volume he had had in that game. 337 yards, where he really killed your expectations, was only one touchdown, and he threw an interception. Against Dallas this week, I expect the volume to continue to be there for Herbert. And if he gets you three touchdowns in this game, which I do project three or more touchdowns for Herbert, he's going to have the volume. He's going to put up the yards and he's going to be one of the top quarterback performances of the week. So if Herbert disappointed you in week one with his fantasy output, don't worry. Don't overreact. Roll him right back out there in week two because he's absolutely going to torch Dallas like Tom Brady did in week one. And hopefully you listen to us all offseason. You have that Keenan Allen, Justin Herbert stack. Yes and can reap the rewards of that in your lineups. But that's it for the week two slate. If you guys like what we do here on the show, like it a sub, always appreciated. Again, hit that Discord link. It's free. It's in the description. Would love to have you join us in the party. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.